Amen. Amen. Okay, if anyone's got a Bible, I'm going to read the passage for my husband tonight. And I'm reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 21. Numbers, chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and they spoke against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food, no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent, set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. I'm now reading from John chapter 3 and verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. 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 Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for the cross, Lord, which we're going to talk about today. And I thank you, Father, that you were punished. You punished your son that we could be forgiven. He became a curse that we could be blessed. He was wounded that we could be healed. He became poor that we could enjoy your riches. Father, he tasted death that we could enjoy life. Let life come out of this meeting today. In Jesus' mighty name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. I want to start today by asking you the question, you've ever wondered why the cross... Is, it is the most recognized symbol in all of the world today. And what the cross began as was just something where people were punished and put to death. And it's strange that today every church bears a cross. The, there's the red cross. It's a symbol for healing and life. Even pop stars wear the cross around their neck, and they don't even know why they really do it. But the reason is, is because the cross is the center point of human history. It is cosmic in its dimensions, because it is the place where God, who created everything, decided to display his glory and his power and his love and his goodness by sacrificing his only son. And that's why we call Friday Good Friday. And a lot of people, they know the the what of the cross. They know what happened on the cross. But God wants us to know why. 
he, a loving God, would send his son and crush him for our sin and make him bear all our iniquities and put all the sin of the world and all the sickness of the world upon him to bear that and to bear all the wrath and the judgment of God, why he would do that. And if you want to know why he would do that, the passage my wife just read explained why he do it. Jesus said, because as Moses was lifted up as a... As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And to understand that, to understand the why Jesus was lifted up, obviously you've got to understand what was happening with Moses with the serpent in the wilderness. And I'll tell you what was happening. The people in the wilderness who were God's people, they sinned and they were grumbling in the, in the desert. And they were, sit, the Bible says they were sitting against God and fiery serpents came in amongst them. And the fiery serpents bit them. And these fiery serpents were poisonous and the people in the wilderness were perishing. Many died and others were dying because this poison was among them and these serpents were among them and, and they said to, the, to, to, to the Moses, the people went to Moses and they said, Moses, and they, said, they said, we have sinned, we have spoken against the Lord and against you and, and we ask you to ask God to take these serpents away from us. So Moses then prayed to God and God said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for them. You make a fiery serpent, the symbol of the thing that bit them and you hoist it up on a pole, and when they look at the pole, th they will stop dying and they will live. And a great miracle happened to them because these people who had poison in them and were all dying and had no hope from the poison, when they looked at this serpent lifted up on a pole, a miracle happened. The life from God entered them and they lived. The life of God entered them and they lived. And Jesus said, he said, this, the reason this is significant for us, he says, is because he is going to be lifted up on a pole just like that serpent was. And the reason he's going to be lifted up on a pole, the same as he said, is that you and I, each of us, every human being, has been bitten by a serpent. And in the scriptures, the serpent represents Satan. And ever, whoever was, was born and descended from Adam since the fall of man, since Adam agreed with Satan, we are born with a sin nat nature. And the serpent, as he bit the people in the wilderness and caused them to perish and die, each human being has been bitten by Satan, but we carry the poison that is called sin. And that is in us. And Jesus says, I was lifted up to deal with that. And, and if you want to know what the cause of every problem is today in the world, all the, the wickedness, all the child trafficking, all the abuses, the inequality, the pornography, all these things that we know are wicked, all the racism, all the, the injustice that's in the world, all these things that are even the things that are affecting this planet like climate and all the rest of that. The reason is this little word called sin. And the problem is, no use railing against those who are in power because that little thing called sin is in you. And it's why you're mean to your wife. It's why you, you do things in relationship which you wonder afterwards why I did them. It's why you take drugs and you wish you never took drugs. It's why that you do things to your wife, you betray, you lie and steal, and then you don't know why you do it. It's because there is a power at work in you called sin. It's, it's what affects relationships. It it's cause, causes divorces. It destroys homes. And it's in you. And it's in me. It's why I'm often not the person that I know I ought to be, let alone what God knows I ought to be, is because of this sin, this thing called sin. And it causes guilt, it causes shame, it causes despair, it causes depression. And actually, just as the serpent poisoned people, sin poisons, it actually poisons your home, it poisons your family, it poisons everything. 
And our problem is just as the people were perishing because of the poison, the Word of God says the poison of sin has the same effect. It says the wages of sin is death. It means sin that is in us makes us perish. It causes our lives to perish, not thrive, but ultimately it causes us to, to perish eternally. But because the wages of sin, and just as these people were perishing in the wilderness, each human being that has sin in them is perishing. But I want to praise God. I want to praise God today. Because today is called good news. Sorry, today is called Good Friday, and we call the gospel good news. And verse 14 of the, uh, the passage I read says, As Moses was lifted up in the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The good news is, though each human being is affected by sin, is afflicted by sin, God loves you so much and he wants to do something about the problem. He is merciful, and he doesn't have to, but the thing that is destroying us, the thing that is making us uh, things perish, the thing that is ruining relationships, the, th the little thing called sin, God said, as they were perishing in the wilderness, I'm going to do something about it. And the good news of Good Friday is he didn't require us to do something about it. He took his own son, Jesus Christ, and he took him to a cross, and he nailed him to the cross, and he lifted him up on the cross, but he lifted him up for a reason. It says that the reason he lifted him up was that, that, that you would not perish. That this thing, sin, that is making you perish, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever so believed would not perish. And these people in the desert were perishing. And then they went to Moses and they said, we've sinned. And Moses prayed and it says, God lifted up this serpent. And he said, tell the people to look at the serpent that's lifted up on the pole. And as these people who were perishing, who were perishing in their poison, looked to what God lifted up on the pole for the purpose of salvation, a great miracle happened. The power of the poison that was killing them was destroyed by God. And as they looked to the serpent, new life from heaven was produced in the people by God. God destroyed the poison, and God released new life. And Angela just gave a testimony, and she said, I was born again. And these people who were perishing and could not help themselves, when they looked at that serpent lifted up on a cross, and God destroyed the power of death, and he released a new life in them, a life that came from heaven, not a human life. This is what it is to be born again. And you could be in church your whole life and not be born again from on high. And it's so important because Jesus said, unless you are born again, you can by no means enter heaven. But when these people looked at what God lifted up for the purpose of salvation, every power of death, every power of the serpent was destroyed by the power of God. And by the power of God, a new life entered these people and they lived. And they lived. And I remember when I, I got my own testimony. I had a, a, a season in my life. I was in church from the age of 15 off and on. But my life never changed until I was in a hotel room in America. And I had everything. I had a lot of privileges. I had a good job. I had everything going for me. But I was empty. And I, didn't, I couldn't figure out myself. I couldn't figure out why I was feeling so empty. I was just lost. I didn't know why I was here for. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know why I was depressed. I had a lot of opportunity. And I thought, there is something wrong with me. And I sat in that hotel room, and I put on the TV, and a preacher came on the TV. Praise God for preachers. Preacher came on the TV, and he started to preach. 
And I started to listen to it. And God played the videotape of my life in that hotel room. And he showed me everything I ever did. And I realized my understanding and self-image. You know, we, we say we're good people to protect ourselves. I was saying I was basically a good guy. And God showed me all the betrayals, all the lies, all the, all the people I've let down, all the people I've betrayed. And I realized I was not a good guy. And then he showed me that all the wrong I did, he put it on his son, Jesus Christ. And because I trusted him, I was forgiven. And something happened at that moment. Something happened in that hotel room. A, a peace and a joy that I'd never known entered my life. And I got out of that hotel room and I stood up and I said, I am so new. There, there is a new Martin here. And I used to go to work and I used to walk into a trading room and other people could see it too. They would stand there after a week and they'd say, what has happened to you? What has happened to you? What had happened to me? I was no longer miserable. I was no longer defeated. I was no longer guilty. I was no longer shameful. All my sin, all my guilt, and all my shame was washed away at that cross. And I'd been filled with the life of God. The Holy Spirit had entered me, and I was a new creation. <laughs> this is what it is to be born again. And this is what God wants to do to you. Jesus said he was lifted up. And it said, when these people looked at the cross, when they looked at it, he said, who, who, he who looks at it shall live. And Jesus said, the Son of Man will be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have not life, but eternal life. And so when we look at what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, they looked at the serpent lifted up on the pole. The life of God destroyed the poison and the life of God, a new life from heaven entered them and they lived, but they lived a different kind of life. They lived a life from God. They lived a life unto God. And this is what Jesus says. When we look to him on the cross, we don't live a life like anybody else lives. We look to him and we live an abundant life and we live an eternal life that we know that will go on and on and on. And we are born again, and we have a new life in us, and it is a life of God that is imparted from heaven. It's a life of peace. It's a life of joy. It's a life of knowing that God is with you. It's a life of knowing God has cleansed you. It's a life of knowing that God will always heal you. It's a life of knowing that God can do anything for you. It's a different quality of life. It's abundant life. And so you say, well... I'm somebody, I just know there's something in me that's working in my life that's not good. Maybe I'm addicted to something. Or maybe I keep looking at things, then I feel shame and guilt afterwards. But I keep doing it, and I don't want to do it. Maybe I keep exploding in my family with anger, and I can't control it. I want to tell you, that is sin at work in your life. That is the devil at work. Or maybe you're doing something that you just hate. That is the effect of the serpent's bite, Satan's work in your life. But I want to tell you, there is something you can do like these people, that everything Satan is doing in your life, all sin, all depression, all despair, all wickedness, all evil, everything that God doesn't want you to have, all torment, all sickness, anything that is not from him will be destroyed by God and a new life from heaven will be imparted to your life in, instead. And I praise God, you can be coming here tonight, and I tell you by testimony, you can just be sick of living. You can just be in such a mess because the enemy is just turning and twisting your life around. But I want to tell you, God says tonight, you can have a new life. You can actually be born again under heaven. He says, I can make you a new creation. And how will that happen? It'll happen the same way because the Word of God is the solution, and the Word of God will never fail. If we do what the Word says, God will do what He says. And what did these people do? When they were poisoned, when they were afflicted, they went to Moses and they said, we have sinned. And they said, we have sinned against God. 
That's what they said. They didn't say we have sinned against Moses because, oh, you, you, you're not going to understand and get anywhere with God until you understand every sin you did, every wrong you did. It's not against people, it's against God. Sin is not an issue of, of man and man. Sin is an issue of between man and God. And so we've got to come and say every failure I've done, everything I've messed up, everything I didn't, uh, that I knew was wrong, God, it was a sin against you. And not deny it, and not hide from it, not blame other people, but come to God and say, God, there is something in me. There is something in me. I have sinned. And then they said, they recognized because this poison... They couldn't do anything about it. That's a sin. You can't do anything. They realized they couldn't help themselves with this poison. And I want to tell you, you can't help yourself with your sin. There is a power to sin, and you need a greater power to destroy it. These people came, and they said, we got, we, we, we've sinned, and there's nothing we can do. They're, we're dying. We are perishing, and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. And unless something is done about your sin, no matter how good you are, no matter how many good works you've done, unless the issue of sin in your life is, is addressed, you're going to perish. That's the truth. You're going to perish. There is a heaven and there's a hell. And the only reason people are in heaven is because their sin have been cleansed. And the only people reason people are in hell is because they refuse to have their sin cleansed. But these people came and they came and said, we have sinned. And they came to Moses and said, we can't do anything about it. But they believed that God would be merciful to them. And you've got to trust. The Bible says that God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, that whoever so believes would not perish. God does not want to leave you in your sin. God does not want to leave you under the power of Satan. He sent His Son to save you. He sent His Son to lift you out of that place. He sent His Son to destroy the power of sin. He wants to do it tonight. He wants you to leave here with a whole new life, with a whole new system, with a, with a victory and a peace and a joy that is real and be able to come out here and say the same as I did. I'm not religious. I'm a churchgoer. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I've been born again of the Spirit. And they had to just simply confess their sin, admit they were powerless to do anything about it, that to believe in God's mercy. But here's the big thing they had to do. They had to look. They were told to look at what God lifted up on a pole for the purpose of salvation. They could not look at a cat on a stick. They couldn't look at a dog on a stick. They, there was no power to flow from that. They had to look only at that serpent because the serpent was what God lifted up on a pole for the purpose of salvation. And this is why Buddha can't save you. This is why Muhammad can't save you because they were not lifted up for the purpose of salvation. There is only one person God has ever lifted up for the purpose of salvation and his name is Jesus Christ and that's what Good Friday is all about. And when they looked at him, the, the serpent, and we looked to Christ, the same miracle happens. But I want to tell you, it was not an emotional look. It was not a look of curiosity. They had to look at this serpent lifted on a pole with the look of faith that God was going to be merciful to me and his power would flow. When we look to Jesus Christ, like believing Jesus Christ has been lifted up for me, that God is merciful, that he does not want me to perish. He wants to destroy everything sin is doing and everything Satan is doing. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. When we look with him to the look of faith and we say, I am putting my hope and my trust in you, that you are God's Savior and you were lifted up on a cross to save me from my sin. A great miracle happens. The power of sin, Satan, and all death is destroyed in you, and a new life from above is imparted to you. It's resurrection life. It is eternal life. It is abundant life. And that's why Jesus Christ was lifted up on Good Friday. And I want to have an appeal tonight. I want people to come forward tonight. I want three types of people to come forward. Firstly, people who know you're dying your sin. You just know you walk, you, you, and sin has a victory over you. You're still in that place where you sin, and you repent, and you sin, 
and you repent, you sin, but sin, it, the power of sin is still at work in you. I want you to come and I believe the power of God is going to do something in your life tonight and he's going to destroy that. And I want another appeal. I want people here, you may have been in church your whole life, but you know you're no different than anybody else. You're just trying to be good. You just, you've not been born again of the Spirit. When you are being born again of the Spirit, you know a new life has entered you. You may not be perfect, but you know God is with you. You know you've been filled with the very nature of God in you. You know something has changed. You know you've become not better. You've become totally new. You become a new creation unto God. And if you've never been born again, I want you to come forward because I believe the life of heaven is going to enter you today. And just as, as these people were bitten by the serpent, the serpent produces poison. And all poison, sickness, and disease, it only has one origin. It comes from the serpent. As sin does, it comes from Satan, and God wants to destroy it. If you will look to Jesus Christ tonight, he not only died for your sin, but he was wounded for your... For he was, by his wounds you are healed. He, was, he took stripes on his back for your physical healing. And I believe if you come forward today... Everything the devil's trying to do in your body, everything the devil's trying to do against your health. If you look to him today, the same power that raised the dead and healed lepers and healed people as Jesus was going to flow in this place tonight. And we are going to see the power of God do what only he can do. Destroy sin, produce new life in you and destroy all sickness. So if you're in any one of those camps tonight, I want you to come forward as music plays. And as you come forward, don't just come forward for prayer. Come forward believing the power of God's going to meet you on this mat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.